Now let's learn about the full of a structure as we just uh, talked about it uh, in the last video. So if the player, uh, if the letter that guessed by the player is inside our secret, uh, secret expression, then we're going to replace all the dashes that we see inside the player expression with the actual letter guessed by the player. So I'm going to introduce the for loop structure. The for loop structure is written this way. First of all, we are using the for keyword, and then again, we're using a pair of parentheses, and again, we're using a uh, pair of curly braces, opening and closing one, in order to include or surround every statement that we need to write inside the for loop. So the for loop has three parts. The first part is our index or the counter. So here I'm going to start with index uh, i, which I'm going to start at zero, and I'm explain why uh, equal to zero and why I define i here. And then with the semicolon, I'm going to say what is the condition to end the for loop structure. So the index i will be used uh, to uh, find the character from the very first location of the secret expression to the very last one of the secret word expression. So the very first letter of the secret expression is at index zero, so that's why i is at zero. And the very last one, which is the letter n, is at the very uh, end of this expression, which is this length of the uh, secret expression. So I'm going to call, uh, I'm going to write while uh, for i is less than secret expression the length. And then I'm using a semicolon and I'm writing I++. So let's just uh, talk about the for loop structure and saying that what does it say? Let's say you want to do something uh, 10 times. So you know how many times exactly you want to repeat some, some processes. So here, when I say I equal to zero, and I say I less than the secret expression length, it means that this is going to happen starting from the zero, and then I'm going to count one, two, three, four, up to not including the secret uh, expression in the length. Here, let's say the secret, uh, our secret expression length, let's say is 20. So when I say from i equal to zero to i less than 20, which means i will increase by, as you see here, by one, so it's going to be zero, then one, then two, three, for up to number 19, but not, uh, but not the number 20 itself. So these are the three steps uh, or three expression when you are gonna write the for loop. First of all, what we call, what is the uh, our base or like the counter base, which we start at zero. Then the second one inside after the semicolon here is the condition to end the for loop. And third, the third expression is what we call the for loop step. How we're gonna uh, move from one number to another one. Here is i is zero, the next number will be i plus plus. So why I wrote this for loop? As I showed on the board, uh, I'm gonna see that if, if every character in this secret expression uh, is equal to the character that uh, guessed by the player, which is the player guess. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to write here, I'm going to write an if statement because we're going to check. So if the player guess, so that I need to write that one. So if player guess is equal, equal to, and I'm going to explain the difference between one equal sign and two equal signs. So if player guess is equal to, and what I'm going to compare with, I'm going to compare with each character of which string, this one or this one, for sure, the secret expression. Why? Because that's the one that contains the actual characters and not the player expression. So if the player guess is equal to the secret expression, and we'll learn about the character add method, and as you see here, I'm passing i to be compared with. Okay, what does it... Uh, uh, this will do. Uh, it's going to compare any character guessed by a player with every character of this secret expression, which add index i. And as we said, as I said, i will increase by one after or end of each iteration. So is iteration, is a loop, 
uh, you can use any of these terms. So after all of these iteration, we're going to compare the player guess with every word of the super estimation. So if this is the case, if these are true, if this is true, uh, which means that we uh, there is a match. So now we need to replace the dash in the player expression with the actual character, which is in this case is player guess. In order to uh, create that uh, or update the player expression, I'm going to create a new uh, string here, a temporary string. So I'm going to call it temp, which is a temporary string. And I'm going to set to be an empty string. So this with the double code, uh, two double codes without anything inside is called an empty string. Why I'm defining this TMP or temporary variable? First of all, uh, I want to replace everything that I had here with a dash if there is no match. So I'm going to just keep the match uh, like the dashes if there is no match. And if there is a match, then I'm going to use the actual player guess. So if this is a match, the temporary string will be concatenated with itself for sure, because I'm going to update it. I'm going to create the player expression and I'm going to use the player guess. So that means the player guess will replace the dash. So what if this is there is no match? So as we learn, we're going to use the else statement and the temporary string will be equal to temp plus and because there was no match, we're going to use whatever we had already in the player expression because the player expression might already have revealed some of the characters. So it's going to be character at location I. Okay, and I'm going to explain one more time what we did inside this for the structure. So if there is a match between the character location I of the secret expression and the player guess, we're going to add that player guess, which is a character, to our temporary strings, which will create the player expression. So if there is not a match, then these temporary will, uh, will keep whatever we had already in the player expression. And again, I will go back to the board and I will explain this for loop uh, with some drawing. Hopefully it's going to make more sense. After this for loop, uh, for loop is done, we have a temporary string, which is our updated player expression. But what I need to do, I need to assign the player expression. I need to uh, assign the temp to the player expression. So somehow this temporary variable is just used as some auxiliary helping variable in order to process the text before assigning it back to the player expression. So here, going back to the for loop, why I define the i here and not maybe before the i, before the for loop. So because the index i will be only used inside this for loop, as you see, it's, not, it's only used inside the scope of this for loop. So that's another thing we call about the scope. So a scope of uh, a statement here started here and it ended here. As you see, the i uh, index or the i variable is not used outside the for loop. It's only used here and up to here. So I don't need to define the i uh, index outside the for loop. That's why the index i is here. So for integer i equals to zero, and then the rest and i can be used here. So if I write, for example, set i to be called a five, as you see, and there is an error saying that the symbol i or the variable all cannot be found because it is not defined here. It's only defined inside this for loop. That's what we call the scope of the variables. Okay, now I'm going to just test my uh, code and see that uh, how it works. So let's run our file. So the very first one was J. So as you see now, J is here. And now we have the secret expression has some uh, letters revealed. Let's say, for example, the letter A. As you see here, the letter A is uh, repeated three times. So Java, Wa, and then we had Java programming uh, is one. So there is another A here. So that's the first A, the second A, and here is the third A. So the next uh, word, for example, is the letter M. 
as you see after a we have two m's and these are the only two only m's that we have and for example letter f and you can just continue and um, it's going to repeat so what happens again if i uh, press a wrong uh, character as you see there is no update here and also my chances are deducted by one so now i have only four chances again if i use for example uh, letter c uh, there is no change here because uh, this if condition is wrong so it, none of these for loop structure will be executed there none of these codes will be executed if this if a statement is false so it's going to go only here and it's going to decrease the chances by one so for example letter v and, and then letter p and then letter r and you can continue uh, adding more characters so i'm going to go back to the board and i'm going to explain the way that this for loop works uh, hopefully to clarify the use of this temporary variable that we define here